Welcome to Electronline. Here we have an interesting problem where we're trying to find the force between two charge or two linear charges. Here we have an infinite line charge that has a charge linear charge density lambda sub 1 and it's constant all the way through. And then we have a short segment here that runs in the vertical direction from y equals 0 to y equals b, which in other words the length of the segment is equal to b. And the beginning of the segment is a distance A away from this line charge right here. And the charge density there is a little bit different. It does depend upon the position in the vertical direction. Here is the linear charge density for that rod, call it a rod, and that's y sub r, which is equal to some constant, lambda sub 2, times b divided by y plus a. So y would run from y equals 0 to y equals b, which means that when y equals equal to 0, the linear charge density is lambda sub 2 b over a, and when y is equal to b, the charge density is equal to lambda sub 2 b divided by b plus a. Also, of course, keep in mind that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, which is the permittivity of free space, and just so we remember that the electric field away from an infinite line charge that has a charge density lambda is equal to 2k lambda divided by r, r being the distance away from that line charge. And in our particular case, since the charge density is lambda sub 1, and the distance away from there to there would be a plus y, y starts at 0 equal to there, so it would be y plus a would be the distance away from this linear charge density. So how do we find the force? Well, first of all, we know that by definition, the electric field can be found by taking the force experienced by a test charge divided by the size of the test charge. And so therefore, we can then say that the force would be equal to the electric field times the charge, which means the force that we feel on some segment, small segment like that, and notice that this here has a length dy, and the charge on that small segment, the dq, would be equal to the charge density of the rod times dy, and since the charge density is equal to this, that would be equal to lambda 2b over y plus a times dy. So that would be dq of this small little segment. So therefore, the force felt by that small little segment would be a small little df, which is equal to the electric field at that location, which is given by this quantity right here, which is 2k lambda sub 1 divided by y plus a, and that doesn't look like a very good lambda, there we go, times dq, and dq is equal to this which would be times lambda sub 2 b over y plus a times dy. All right, now all we have to do is find the total force is simply integrated from y equals a to y equals b across that rod like that, which means that f, the total force, is equal to the integral from y equals 0 to y equals b, that's a proper, those are the proper limits because we're going to have y limits of df, which is equal to, well, factoring out everything that's a constant, 2k lambda 1, lambda 2, and b are all constant. They can come out. So this is 2k lambda 1, lambda 2, times b, times the integral of dy divided by the quantity y plus a quantity squared, going from y equals 0 to y equals b. So all we have to do then is integrate that integral. It's actually a simple integral to integrate because we can simply bring this to the numerator. This is equal to 2k lambda 1 lambda 2 times b times the integral from 0 to b of the quantity y plus a to the minus 2 power dy. And notice that this is easy to integrate because there's no differential. The differential of what's inside the parentheses is simply dy, so we don't have to make any changes there. So let's go ahead and integrate that. So we can say that the force is equal to 2k lambda 1 lambda 2 times b times this quantity right here, which is 
y plus a to the minus 1 power divided by minus 1, so it's minus 1 over the quantity y plus a to the first power in the denominator, evaluated from 0 to b. All right, now let's take that negative sign and put it up front here so we can get rid of it. It looks a little cleaner. Now let's plug in the limits and see what we get. So the total force is equal to minus 2 k lambda 1 lambda 2 b times. Plug in the upper limit instead of y, of course. So we get 1 over, that would be b plus a, minus, when we plug in the lower limit, y becomes 0, that would be 1 over a. Now let's go ahead and simplify this and see what we get. f equals minus 2 k lambda 1 lambda 2 b times. When we subtract one from the other, we need the common denominator, which means there will be a minus the quantity b plus a, all divided by the product of these two, which is a times hmm, a plus b, b plus a, doesn't matter, we'll reverse the order. And here we can say that we have a minus a, that cancels out, and we end up with a minus b. But this minus b with this minus becomes a positive, so we get f is equal to 2 k lambda 1 lambda 2 b times b in the numerator, that's all that's left, a minus a cancels out, we have a minus b, minus cancel, minus becomes plus b, divided by a times a plus b, and so finally simplified a little bit more, and replacing 2k with what k is equal to, so here we can say that 2k is equal to 2 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, which is 1 over 2 pi epsilon sub naught, in case you like it in this format better than with a k. So we can say that the force is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2, b squared in the numerator, divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught, the permittivity of free space, times the quantity a times a plus b. And that would be the force, the total force, on this rod due to the presence, to being in the presence of this infinite line charge here and with the rod having a charge density defined by this quantity right there. And that's how you find the force between the rod and the infinite line of charge.